All right, every 20 years or so, I like to talk to this guy, but he's a, a great mind. He's just finished a great book. He's the former CFO of Pixar, you know, Toy Story fame and all. I don't think they've ever made a bad movie. Anyway, uh, Lawrence Levy writes to Pixar and beyond, and it's an interesting way, my unlikely journey with Steve Jobs to make entertainment history. And while he and I were chatting during the break here, he indulged my curiosity to bring politics into this. He's not a political fellow at, at all. Uh, but one of the things I was saying, Lawrence, is that was a tough sell uh, for Pixar folks to accept Apple, this conquering behemoth, and, and Steve Jobs, this at the time monster control freak, uh, to keep that free spirit going and to get stuff done. It worked, and, and, and you, you elaborate on that. That's a concern a lot of people have in the markets about Donald Trump, whether he could keep those kindred spirits for change going in a constructive way and not bash the system. Uh, night, night and day, and that was not the intent of your book, but if you'll indulge that theory, your experience and what you learned working with Steve Jobs, working on that kind of unusual combination that, did a good, that worked, uh, lessons for Mr. Trump should he get elected? Well, I can say what I learned from Steve, and it's great to see you again, Neil. Same here. Yeah. So uh, in those years at Pixar, what Steve demonstrated was a power to collaborate. And if I were to use one word uh, to describe what happened back then is that uh, he learned. You know, he had a lot to learn coming in. Here he was this coming from the computer industry, and we were marching into a completely new industry. We didn't understand the entertainment industry at all. And so we literally had to learn it, and he had to learn what it took to but run. he didn't know anything about movies. He didn't. Right? Or no, no, but that's the standard. Animation. Or, I mean, that, that was going to be the new way to come, but did, did Pixar folks just say, oh, my God? Oh, uh, Pixar folks did. They, yeah. they were sort of running scared at that moment in time. Uh, but, you know, he has a fascinating arc that I cover in the book. Where the, you know, he, he starts out as sort of the feared absentee right. landlord, and he ends up as the beloved patriarch. And the question is, what did he do in order to go through that arc? And it was a period of learning. You're right, we didn't know anything about the entertainment industry, but we would shuttle back and forth to Hollywood and ask all the questions so we could figure but it, it out. But it wasn't your way or the highway. Now, the rap, again, you're indulging me on this, and I yeah. appreciate that, against Donald Trump is he, he, his critics say he's a bully, he's, he's, he's just going to wreck the whole China shop. Um, but that I've seen covering him in his businessman days, he's actually quite pragmatic, open to ideas. Uh, it's not his way or the highway a lot of time. Uh, that was the rap against Steve Jobs, that he was dictatorial, huge temper. Uh, that might have been the case at Apple and all that. It was a very different beast at Pixar, wasn't it? It was, and that's one of the reasons that I wrote the book, because I thought in all of the coverage of Steve since he tragically died, yeah. uh, Pixar was a, that story was a bit of an afterthought, and I thought that it missed something really important about him and about what happened during those years that was important, not just for Pixar, not just for him, but even for Apple going forward. I always wonder, and you and I briefly chatting about it, that that's one of the most successful corporate pairings I've ever covered, only because it was so doubted, uh, and, and that it could have easily been crushed. The, both independent spirits at both companies could have been washed out. How did he avoid that? How did he keep the spark? Well, we made what, and I have a whole chapter in the book on this. I think it's one of the most courageous decisions that executives make, which is basically trust your creative people. So it picks us and butt out and butt out. Steve was not a filmmaker, not a movie maker, neither was I. And so you but have the appeal to... was what? Animation was going to be a big deal for computers and for Apple leases and all the rest, right? Animation was going to be a huge deal. It was going to put, not just put Pixar on the map, but it was going to change. Put Apple on the map, right? But eventually come to put Apple on the map, right. you know, as it eventually led to some of the changes that happened at Apple. But at Pixar... But it made each cool. It may, oh, it definitely made yeah. each cool. Yeah, Pixar became really cool. Um, and, but we learned how to trust John Lasseter and Andrew Stanton, and Pete Doctor, all those there. And that's hard to do because creative mistakes are really expensive. So for an executive to trust their um, creative people takes courage. And so... But would that mean, obviously, it couldn't be everything you wanted, it couldn't be everything that Steve Jobs wanted. If a Trump were to get elected, or Hillary Clinton for that matter, yeah. uh, it can't be everything they want. They have to get stuff done. So what's the... 
lesson here. Oh, they have to go to Pixar and figure out how to, do, <laughs> how to become great innovators. That will yeah. really start to unclog a lot of the... But well, you have to be open to ideas. You have to be... You look, it requires two things. You have to have, on the one side, a kind of like passionate intensity to do great work. And on the other side, you have to have the willingness to collaborate. And those two forces pull against each other. You know, the passionate intensity is kind of like, you know, has a lot of hubris with it. Right. But the power to collaborate requires you to yield. So finding that balance is really hard. Pixar perfected that balance. I think so. And well, so, you had a lot to do with that. Yeah. A, a little humility and a little humor goes a long way. Oh, it goes a very long way. It goes a long way. And yeah. the rest, as they say, is history. Lawrence Levy, former Pixar CFO to Pixar and beyond. It is a must read, and it is not meant to be, Lawrence would not tell you to do this, a primer on politics. That's just a, a freebie here at Fox Business to extend that and lessons learned in what I think is one of the most successful corporate pairings ever.